Welcome to the Agile community and our technical tips and tricks videos. My name is Sebastian Perusa, Director of Community and Senior Engineer. Today I will guide you through the process of how to log in into Active Directory on Agile OS. So thinking about the Active Directory login leads us directly into the security topic. Why that? If you think of your Agile endpoint, UD Pocket, OSC install device, it will start directly into the desktop. That might cause some trouble if your UD Pocket got stolen, lost. Because if you booted it into the desktop, you might have configured a local wallpaper. Maybe also a specific session that starts automatically after the booter process. Still, you will need credentials to start the session. No question, I don't think that you will have stored the local user credential on the endpoint. But just in case, it would be enough maybe for someone who would like to attack your company to know that this stick is coming from your company and will give him or her first insight about how to make a man in the middle attack or whatever. So using the Active Directory login before the desktop starts gives you a first security block, let's say, before someone is able to see where and who you are. Obviously, we have in the meantime new features called pre-boot authentication. And we have also a feature which is called shared workplace. But that's something absolutely different that you might consider an addition for the pre-boot authentication or the shared workspace instead of the directory login if you're already using EMP, Enterprise Management Pack. On that case, please look at the other tutorial that we created on the shared workplace. On the obfuscate company data, you might also have deployed a local custom partition for Teams maybe, or for any kind of unified communication solution that we have available. So that's also something that you do not want to expose to someone who boots up your UD pocket or your device. Staying on the security side, we might also speak about the screen lock. Because if you leave your endpoint for lunch break or whatever, the device will start, in most cases, a screensaver. But that's it. So as soon as you move your mouse, you will be able to use the local desktop. And in addition, if a session is started and is not auto-locking itself, he or she might also be able to start a session in your name or maybe working your active session. So that's something which is extremely dangerous and that's the reason why we have the ability to set the screen lock at the Active Directory login so you will be the only one who is able to unlock your system. So now let's dig into the configuration. Like on every tutorial, we are looking at the Universal Management Suite, also known as UMS. As you might know, as soon as you start an Agile OS endpoint, it will start directly into the desktop. So assuming you have a firmware customization, like a wallpaper or a Citrix session assigned to that endpoint, you could easily start it from there, which would, in that specific case, already give a first insight about which kind of device a potential hacker or burglar would look at. The next use case, just in your mind, is Let's assume that you might have several sessions that you want to start, maybe an ADP session and a Citrix session. You would have to enter your credentials for your Active Directory login every time. And last but not least, that's the use case we already covered in the introduction, you may want to synchronize your Active Directory password with the screensaver. So let's start there. First of all, I have to mention that the configuration that we have here under UMS Administration and Active Directory LDAP isn't an Active Directory join, neither related to having a device logging into the Active Directory. That window is only meant to be used if you want to import users or groups from your Active Directory into the UMS console to use that Active Directory login to logging into the UMS. Or, and that's the second use case, you're using shared workspace, which will be covered in another tutorial. But just let them configure it as it is. It isn't related to your endpoint directly. So first of all, we'll create a profile for the device Active Directory login. Just to mention, again, we are not joining Active Directory. We are just logging in into the Active Directory. So 
So if you want to assign Active Directory group policy, something like that, or if you want to join an Azure Active Directory, it isn't covering that use case. So the first information that we need is how is our domain called and which domain controller do we want to use? Let's check now that the Active Directory can be used. Then the default domain that we want to log in into. In my case, it's my demo environment. All the other configurations can be left as standard. Just in case, if you are not sure where your DNS is located, you can already enter here one Active Directory controller that you want to reach out. If you have multiples, I would definitely recommend to enter more than one. Then I would double check if not already made via DHCP or another profile, just to configure a local DNS server. So I have several ones, but in my case, I will use my Active Directory domain controller, which is also a DNS. And just because I want to make a DNS suffix to every URL or FQDN I'm reaching out, I'm using my standard domain. So basically, that's how we are creating a connection to the Active Directory. What we need now is to tell the endpoint to connect explicitly to that Active Directory. That's what we are doing here. I want to log in into an Active Directory domain. All the rest in general can be left by default. One thing that I would just want to mention is the remember last username. I would keep it unchecked because from security reason, I don't want to see the username when the device boots up, but it isn't mandatory. So let's save the profile and assign it to the endpoint. And now let's see what happens on the endpoint itself. So the configuration is applying. And if we made the configuration right, the device should not reboot, but just restart the graphical user interface and show a login dialog. That looks good. Uh, my PC is just a little bit slow because I have several virtual machines open at the moment. So that's the reason why I'm waiting for the DHCP to come up and then this error should be gone. Here we go. So now let's see if my test user can log in. So now the login method is sent out directly with the Active Directory. So even if the UMS server wouldn't be there, your Active Directory login would function. So what you don't see here is maybe Active Directory information, but you are seeing that you have a logged in Active Directory user and you have the ability to log out over the start menu. And then you should come back directly into the login dialog from the beginning and being able to re-log in. So that's the basic approach about how to get logged into the Active Directory. So as soon as your device starts, you will not be redirected into the desktop directly anymore. You have a first authentication step to achieve. And that's basically what you can now use in a couple of profiles when it comes to your sessions as a path through authentication. I'll just cover a few of them to show you which sessions are compatible with that path through mechanism. So the most famous ones are the Citrix workspace app itself. So as soon as you are using this feature here under use pass through, all the information from your login dialog will pass through. So you're not obliged to enter again your username and password. Same for an IDP session. For the Horizon client,
and for a couple of other sessions just to mention that a browser session isn't usable from that so you cannot pass through the Active Directory login into the Firefox or Chromium session at the moment. It might come in the near future but at the moment it isn't available. So now that we configured also the path through for a session you might also ask what happens now if someone is leaving the device as it is. Usually the screen saver would start. And in that case I can confirm that the screen saver would at least if you set up a password in your profile should ask you for your Active Directory credential as soon as you want to unlock your local PC. So let's go through this. Screen lock screen save. I would just put um, an icon on the desktop just to avoid to wait one minute. But in UK that's not mandatory. The only thing I want to mention is to switch between the non-mode to a user or screen lock password. In that case I would even recommend to go to the screen lock password. And if you want to set one generic which can be used then on every device it isn't something that I would recommend in general, but you will see the use case why I'm putting that into here. You can leave it by user password if you want, but in that case I just entered Agile as a password. And I'm assigning now the profile to the endpoint. Let's check on the endpoint. So configuration arrived. I could now wait for five minutes, but I will just start the screen lock from the desktop. And I'm already seeing that I can unlock the password now, the, the desktop now, by using my Active Directory login instead of nothing or a generic password. Okay, that's great. So now let's log out again. So you may ask now, why did I put a um, local screen lock password? The reason is, let's imagine that you have deployed your profile to all your endpoints and only Active Directory login is allowed. Now let's imagine a second step that you as an administrator need, need an access to the endpoint for updates, for debugging reasons, or even if you want to check a local configuration, even if the user is not there and you cannot log in with Active Directory login. For that use case, it would be pretty handy to log in with a local user on the endpoint. And that's what we are doing here on the local user. Log in with screen lock password. And as soon as this configuration is set, you are not obliged anymore to use only the territory login, but also if you want, as an optional way, a local user. And this password is the password that you define as a screen lock password. Important to mention that this configuration needs to be a pretty secure password, just because you don't want to give access to everyone to the local desktop, even if the issue that the session will be started with your path through would not be able to start, so you cannot access the VDI login, etc. But it's just something I don't want to be made available. So local user, let's now enter my password, which is Agile. And now I can log in locally. And if I would like to, I could now make changes or check stuff locally, especially if it comes to network, etc. That's also a pretty unknown feature. Last thing I want to mention when it comes to Active Directory login, you might already have not seen in my previous screen that the symbol changed a little bit from time to time. And the reason is pretty simple. As soon as the endpoint is staying on the Active Directory or in general the login dialog, it will change also his own logo. And that's something that you can find here under Help, Legend. You will see every state that the device is giving back. And you see now that the device is back into that, let's say, quadrangle. And that means that the device is showing the logon screen. 
So that's helpful if you want to check something and you're not sure if someone is working on that device, like an example. It could be a first check to see if you can do your administrative tasks and stuff without disturbing an end user. The last point on that login dialog, you don't see a login history there. Even if you might expect that now you will be able to see the username, login time, log off time. Yes, it's something that you would see here as soon as you would have enabled the user login history, which is a separate tutorial that we Thank you for joining our technical video session. All links mentioned in this session are available in the show notes section of this video. You will find more technical content and other videos on agilecommunity.com and agileacademylearn.agile.com.